normally in our caravan reviews, we do the introduction in the first day of our test. But it's actually day three of an eight day tour of the northwestern parts of New South Wales on our Outback pub experience. Why is it taking me so long to get this intro done? It's because honestly, this bush tracker 19 foot compact is so sophisticated, I'm struggling to get my head around it. This is part of a new generation of caravans. It's gone fully gasless, which means it has a huge amount of solar, massive amounts of batteries, and of course, a sophisticated BMS to control it all. So we'll start our review there. There are a lot of small details that justify the replacement cost of this 19 compact. The vast majority are in the electronics and power system, but there is more. There is an electric lift for the spare wheel, an incredibly interesting witty anti-theft system that will blast a horn and flicker lights if disturbed, imitation stone bench tops, discreet mag chargers for phones, real leather, and arguably the best suspension in the market, Simplicity Axle's load shearing coil suspension. Bush Tracker uses a locally made chassis with a fully welded alloy frame that is lined and clad with 3mm thick fiberglass. Sandwiched between are solid fire resistant insulation panels that are cut to size so will never sag. The walls are 25mm thick and the ceiling stand out at 75mm thick and it's a single skin that joins from the foot of the van to the back of the bottom. With minimal holes cut for wiring it should be leak free and certainly offered great insulation in the hot Sturt National Park sun. The floor is a resin infused composite that will never rot and is tough enough to suspend the water tanks and plumbing, meaning the chassis is the lowest point under the van. One of the benefits of having a couple of days to have a really good look at this particular bush tracker is that I've been sitting in the camera car for that time watching the suspension work underneath the caravan. This uses Simplicity Axle's load shearing system. Now this one is the coil arrangement. And honestly, it looks fantastic. The amount of vibration that's coming through the suspension being taken out of the van under all the corrugations we're seeing, it's mind blowing. It still lurches a little bit in wind. We did have some pretty windy days, but the ride is super smooth. The rest of the underside, as with all bush trackers, faultless. Everything's tucked away neatly. All the plumbing is so well protected. You should never see a problem. The inner drive power management system is the heart and brains behind this bush tracker's self-sufficiency credibility. With an incredible 1480 watts of solar panels on the roof, the single 60 amp MPPT regulator has its job cut out. A 40 amp DC-DC charger controls the charge from the Anderson plug and there is an AC charger for well, no real reason, as even in bad light, this van creates more than enough power to never have to plug it into a main socket. While we're on the subject of power systems, this particular bush tracker uses a flexible solar panel arrangement, which saves about 80 kilos from the roof of the caravan, which is really important for your center of gravity. The other interesting thing is they're sitting on a bit of core flute-like material that helps keep the heat of the solar panels off the 75 mil thick ceiling. A C-Zone digital switching system that incorporates an iPad app controls the whole van and one thing in particular interests me, turning on the Truma Eventer air conditioner remotely to cool the van for the last hour of your drive, feeding it power from the Anderson plug and solar means it won't impact your 600 amps of battery. When you do pull up, the Enerdrive supplied 3000 watt pure sign inverter powers the fantastic Thetford induction cookers, the combi microwave oven and AC. The fridge is a 188 litre 12 volt compressor from Dometic that requires less ventilation than a three way adding better dust resilience to the build. Water wise, the van carries 300 litres of general use water between four 75 litre tanks which are digitally valved to maintain the load balance. And there is a separate 75 litre tank for drinking and an optional grey tank. The toilet is a traditional cassette type which is tucked away in a recess to allow for maximum shower space. And to round it off, should you need to lift water from a creek or river, there is a pump, fine particulates and UV filter to extend stays. Now the qualifier, this van is not entirely fossil free. The hot water service uses diesel and doubles as a space heater. 
Yes, you could option on an electric system, but typically an instant hot water system will draw as much as 100 amp, so you'll need more battery and another inverter to be safe. Or you could option one on with a holding tank, but then you'll wear the weight penalty of lugging around all that hot water. So this 19 foot compact is a family van with triple bunks in the back and this quite high bed at the front. Now the reason why it's so tall off the ground or off the floor is for storage, particularly for a massive front tunnel boot, which is a massive highlight. Now I really like the subtlety in the decor. The color is just very classy. There's not too much going on. There's no fancy LED lights to sort of dazzle you. This is just a sophisticated, classy interior. Towing the 19 foot compact can be done with a mainstream ute like a D-Max or a Ranger as it's not too big and the 3500 kilo ATM is within the limits of most new utes and SUVs. But we had a Ram 1500, the car all caravanners are talking about. We talked a lot about fuel consumption though, which hovered around 30 litres per 100 kilometres travelled to most of the trip. Don't worry though, this Ram had an optional 200 litre fuel tank. Just don't forget your wallet, it's not cheap to fill and you'll do that a bit. So, does it all work? Absolutely flawlessly. As you saw, around about 7 p.m. one night, we saw as much as 20 amps coming in through the solar. And cooking with induction is efficient, it's fume-free, and it's easy to clean up. If you're willing to compromise and put in an electric hot water service, you could reasonably live completely off-grid in a caravan like this. It is truly the future of fossil fuel-free caravanning.